Uh, outside of Parliament and within, there are there is fierce debate about how far and how fast the government should move in releasing the nation from lockdown. Many think uh, government is moving too quickly, but there is a view that as the virus is far less dangerous to most young people, the whole population lockdown is way too much. And it's a view held by some inside Whitehall and, uh, and outside. Among the critics has been Jonathan Sumption, Lord Sumption, former Justice of the Supreme Court, and I'm happy to say he joins us now. A very good afternoon to you. Good afternoon. Um, I know you've listened to the... Um, the, the little bit of the debate we've just played. You've listened to the Prime Minister's speech last night. You probably had a glance at the 50-page document published this afternoon. I've read just, it. Uh, you've read it. Excellent. Mm -hmm. I just wonder where you are on, the, on, on where the government is. Well, I'm exactly the, where I was before because the mountain has grown and put forth a mouse. Hardly anything is being changed. Uh, and uh, that seems to me to be the main criticism to be made of the Prime Minister's statement. But there is, I think, an important thing to notice about it, which is that the narrative has changed in quite a significant way. Um, the fact is a lockdown doesn't reduce deaths. What it does is to push infections and the resulting deaths into the future. And that's because uh, viral diseases are not like a hurricane which just blows over and we can all come out in the sun again. And the government's paper that published today does recognise this. It says the virus is going to be with us for a long time. Well, actually, now, I mean, you're not quite right there, are you? Far be it for me yeah. to argue with a Supreme Court justice, former Supreme Court justice. You can suppress the virus down to a level and then test those test, trace and isolate individual cases if you get it to a low enough level, and then you can suppress and go about normal only, life like South Korea is. And I think that is the you objective. You can only do that if you have a sufficient, either a vaccine or a sufficient degree uh, of collective immunity. No, but, but South Korea has neither of those things. And South Korea's economy itself, is widely open and it has, it, it, it's not in that position, is it? The government itself has recognised that viruses do not go away. And we're going to have to live with this virus for a long time. South Korea recognises that, you but has none of the problems... You will find it on page 12 you, of their statement. Yeah, but but, but you, you get small outbreaks and you try and suppress them as quickly as you can. You don't have to say everybody's going to get it. And we may well have a vaccine within a couple of years anyway. So you, you're, you're well, talking about... Well, we can't about... be locked down for two years. No, but we South can't... Korea isn't locked down. I keep coming back to the point. There are countries who've shown how you yes. can do this. If yes, you can temporarily Sweden's... suppress, if you can temporarily suppress to a level where you can then isolate individual cases, you can go about a relatively normal life for two years without a lockdown. You can certainly do that, or you can do what Sweden is doing, which is not to bother with a lockdown at all, and their results are not significantly different from ours. I mean, the fact is uh, that, according to the Office of National Statistics, 91% of the deaths have been with people with un serious underlying conditions. 88% have been of people um, uh, uh, over 65. The number of deaths of people under 50 is so tiny that the Office of National Statistics isn't even able to show it on their colourful charts. Yet it is people who are fit and under 65 who are being asked to sacrifice not just their liberty, but their jobs, their businesses, and all the ordinary collective activities that make life worth living for something that so, hardly affects them at all. So let's be clear about your approach. It is essentially to say someone like yourself, you're what, you're 70 plus, Yes. You will make your own choice about how much risk of exposure you want to take. And you will decide yes. whether you lock down. But Absolutely. the rest of us will make our own choice. And most young people would be advised just get on with things. Exactly. Uh, I doubt whether it was ever justifiable to deprive people of their liberty because the government had failed properly to appear, prepare for a pandemic. But the only respectable argument that's ever been for a lockdown was that pushing infections into the future was a strictly temporary measure to allow time for the NHS's intensive care capacity to catch up. Now, it's obvious that the NHS capacity has caught up. That's partly because the government has done a very good job in increasing ICU capacity, and partly because the threat of uh, was always grossly overstated. We have two huge temporary Nightingale hospitals lying empty. We have at the moment a large unused ICU capacity. And that's why we heard nothing last night from the PM about saving the NHS. And the phrase has been dropped from their slogan. So this lockdown is no longer about saving the NHS. It's about shielding us from the risk of infection. 
And frankly, we can all make our own decisions. I, I, come, about I come that. back. I think it's about getting it to such a low level that we can then more or less live with it suppressed without any lockdown for anybody. Uh, that which that would is be... not a good enough justification right. for for a qualified house imprisonment applicable in principle to the whole population. It really is not. This is the worst interference with personal liberty in our history. Okay. For what is, by historical standards, not a very serious pandemic, except for particular categories of vulnerable people right. who can isolate themselves voluntarily. Okay. Uh, that that position is, is you're, you're not alone in holding that position. I, am I not. do want to. I do want to get some of your your legal advice now. Now I know that you're just saying to the government don't start from here. Just scrap the lockdown and that, that that's all you need to do. What would be your advice to the police on enforcement of the new guidelines? Do you think it is practicable to distinguish between, if you like, reasonable if, uh, adherence... Uh, adherence to the rules in a reasonable way that might involve sitting with two people at a park, two metres a park, or three me four people sitting in the park. I just wonder whether you think the law can apply to this rather complicated advice that's been given as we come out of the, uh, the, the well, hardest the problem, lockdown. The problem about using law as your instrument is that law requires definition, exact definition, and it works in categories. So if you do this, not voluntarily, but compulsorily, you are bound to have laws which make perfect sense in some contexts uh, and not in others. The problem about law is that it excludes common sense. Now, the Prime Minister has said in the House of Commons this afternoon that he trusts the British to use their common sense. But you can't say to a policeman, uh, you must... Um, arrest somebody or find them if he is using common sense uh, and not otherwise. Uh, this, the, the whole legal approach invites a collection of completely arbitrary rules unrelated to the underlying purpose of the regulations. And you couldn't have a more perfect illustration of that than the incredibly complex, utterly arbitrary distinctions contained in the government's document this afternoon, distinguishing between meeting one person and meeting two people, between meeting one person in your back garden and meeting one person in the street outside your front garden. I mean, these are illustrations of the kind of ridiculous distinctions that you get when instead of resorting to common sense, uh, you resort to law. So you would rather it was all common sense and, and no law than, than and an attempt to sort of meld the two? I would, because I have every confidence that our sense of preservation and our common sense will enable us uh, to get through this without uh, the nanny state telling us at every point what we can and what we can't do, especially when so much of what they are saying actually makes no sense at all. Lord Sumption, 